that Mason? Oh, that's Layla and Robert Glasper. Who the is Robert Glasper? <laughs> An amazing, amazing man, y'all. Layla Hathaway. Let me, can we just talk about, listen, y'all. Can we just talk about how amazing Layla Hathaway is? And Robert Glasper. Hey, sexy people. Hey, Mission. How are you, brother Mission? What's up? What's up, sexy people? Hi, beautiful people. Happy 22nd. So Aurora, what it do, what it do, what it do. I hope y'all having a great week. What's this? Wind down Wednesday or wind up Wednesday, whatever. Um, yes, I love that record. That's Layla Hathaway and um, what you call it? Uh, Robert Glasper. You so far. Aw, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, y'all. Um, so check it out, people. Um, we're going to Cali. We're going to LA. We're going to LA. And my husband, who's my co-pilot on every everything we do. Um, my husband is, is, we're actually excited that, you know, um, as we kind of read the judge's orders, you know, we see that there are a lot of, a lot of folks that need to show up. A lot of folks need to show up to court and, um, a lot of things that need to be explained. Um, the good takeaway that I had from it, and I'm not a lawyer. I've, you know, talked to my lawyers about it, but the good takeaway that I had is that at least we, we did not get our case dismissed, um, and we are excited about our case being heard. Now, that means, clearly, yes, we traveling with angels. We got um, in all kinds of protection, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, in the physical and in the um, non-physical space, right, spiritual. But um, I've just learned that when you come from the right place to borrow from my sister Faith, my partner in R&B Divas, when you come from the right place, you can't go wrong. So we're not concerned about anything going wrong. There were some things that I was reminded of, huh, babe? There were some folks we was reminded of that did need to show up mm -hmm. with, with some answers to some questions. And the other thing, and this is all, I'm only really sharing stuff that's in the, the judge's orders, but um, he mentioned how certain key people that they wanted to have taken off the case, um, you know, I guess there's some laws, and don't quote me again because I'm not a lawyer, right? But there are some laws that say, you know, when you're when you're doing this in LA, people can be subpoenaed. That means people will be required to show up and 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 talk about what they got to talk about. And the other thing that stood out for me is, you know, I did not have a lot of key witnesses in Atlanta, and the judge recognized that. And I'm gonna talk about this tonight. I was coming over here to tell y'all I'm going live tonight to do it in more detail, and I'll actually read it. Hey, so Aurora, I'll actually read it the way that it is written because if you're you're ever in a situation where you need to fight for anything you know what i'm saying i think we need to have an understanding of, of what judges orders mean and you know i'll be trying to read as much as possible so i don't have to have so much translated because you know translation ain't cheap but what i did appreciate is i didn't have he said basically i don't need for your witnesses to tell me how this is i'm paraphrasing what I took it as is he didn't need for witnesses in Atlanta, the people that are here in Atlanta, in my hometown, to tell me how I came up with Soul Kids Cabaret. But he definitely, you know, felt like there was some 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 conversations and some witnesses and some key witnesses and non-key witnesses in LA that need to basically, you know, explain the origin of P Valley and all that stuff. And, and we want to know that, right? Um, Actually, I just want my check at the end of the day. I don't really care about how it all happened, but you know, I know I have to go through that process because you say my husband told me at this point, I want to know. I mean, I want to know too, but shit, if somebody said, Well, with this too much TMI, it, it, listen, I don't have to know. I'm just gonna say that, you know what I'm saying? At this point, you know, we got I, it's just so much stuff we want to do, um, that we're going to do. Let me watch how I communicate here. So much stuff that we're gonna do. Um, moving forward, we got R&B divas, which unfortunate. Well, maybe it's fortunate because you guys are gonna get a great show. But R&B divas, which we're gonna follow. You know, my real life journey, everything that we're going through. Um, yes, yeah, somebody asked about music. Uh, we're definitely doing music. Are you kidding me? Absolutely. Uh, right. Somebody got some explaining to do. That's all. So you know, it's, I, I'm. I, I was like, oh. I wanted it to be in Atlanta because obviously for obvious reasons, I mean, LA is just across the board. 
it's LA, you know what I'm saying? Um, I wanted it to happen here, but the judge made some very good points when he said, hey, listen, there's certain witnesses and there's certain people who, I guess there was no jurisdiction over certain people, key people, it's very key people. Y'all got to read the, the, the order to figure out what it, it was. I'm gonna read it for y'all later tonight. So you see exactly what it is, but it's very key people that lady that we ain't gonna mention she, who really wanted to get out of the case. And there was some issue of jurisdiction because she's in another state and blah 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 blah. But that jurisdiction doesn't apply if it's LA, you understand? So the good news is that in LA, everybody can be subpoenaed to um, yeah, come to the party, right? Everybody can be subpoenaed to come to the party. So it's gonna be a process, guys. Um, it's been a long t since 2020. Um, we are going to be back on TV, so you guys won't just have to see me, um, you know, sharing my journey on Instagram and Twitter and all those other places, although I'm going to be um, live tonight. We got the R&B Divas podcast coming, you guys. I've reached out to some of your favorite R&B Divas, even women who haven't been on the show, um, may not be on the show, but just, you know, I think it's a great, babe, I'm live. Um, even women, <laughs> even ladies who haven't done the show, we really want to hear from all our, our fabulous, incredible divas. I got a wish list of some ladies that I just pray, pray, pray will be available for the Army Divas podcast. So guys, please listen to the podcast. We're doing a visual and an audio podcast as well. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about that. You know, She Speaks Live, our weekly late night show that we did at AIB right before COVID. We're in conversations about when we start the new season of that. And Brownstone is in the lab. Um, we are creatively just, you know, really immersing ourselves into coming together uh, vocally and coming together with these great remakes and covers of our previous records. Um, our album is climbing up the charts. It's set at number eight again for a second week. We're trying to get this mug up to number one. It is a woman-owned business, you guys. We got some major announcements um, connected to Brownstone coming up very, very soon. We got some great shows coming up. All I got to say is we get a chance to perform from some very, very dope, amazing people coming up. And I'm just geeked about that. Um, so your girl is working overtime. You know how, like, it's a, I, don't, I don't know if this is, um, well, you know, they say West Indians and Jamaicans, they work a whole bunch of jobs. They don't be playing. I got that in my veins because I got to work my ass off. I've got to do a lot of working and grinding and building. So one of the big things we're excited about, and we really need you guys to support us when you hear about the auditions. We're trying to do everything in tandem. You know, our R&B divas, um, yes, we got new music coming up. Um, but you know, our R&B divas, the first season y'all saw me building Carvado, right? You guys saw me putting together the auditions for Carvado, going to get the fabric for Carvado, you know, getting my models, finding the location. Then we went on after we did the Carvado fashion show, we were invited to Full Figure Fashion Week in New York. So you guys saw that story unfold. So we're really exploring what the premise will be for, you know, there's a collective like ultimate show um, underlying theme, which Faith and I are going to decide what that is. But I think my story in this, at first I was, you know, questioning whether or not I was going to, like I said on my live yesterday, I was questioning whether or not I was going to um, be a part of the show because of all the stuff I was going through. And I'm really, you know, even though I talk about this case all the time, uh, because I have to amplify the message, you know, when you're going up against a billion dollars, this is truly, you know, Nikki and Goliath, you know what I'm saying? I'm not being crazy about what what it means. Like I said, I'm, I'm clear on it. Just, you know, feel good enough about everything to just go, 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 gadget, go. So with that being said, Soul Kids Cabaret is going to come back. Um, I, I put it down for a minute and I remember Miss Maria who designed our costumes, the original costumes, which were amazing for Soul Kids. I posted a clip because I'm going through all of the old footage and I'm looking at, you know, where we came from and the love and the energy and the light that we put into the story. Um, like I said in my post, my feelings were hurt that, you know, I got to see uh, a character from a story that I created win an NAACP Image Award, right? Um, period. Like, call, call him what you want. Call him Uncle Clifford. 
call him Tata Burlesque, call him Miss Sophia, call what, but the character, the embodiment of this lovable character who inherited this venue, who was the den mother to all these women and their stories and their lives. And um, that, that venue being up, being taken over for Vegas. And, and, you know, just at a time when non-binary, gender fluid wasn't even a word. You know, I, I did this thing in 2004 when I was on, on the road with Tyler Perry. I started writing it and it just became a beautiful story and everybody loves it, obviously. I mean, I'm happy about that, but I do feel some type of way that when I look back and I see Trent, and y'all can't look back. Y'all go look at that video. Go look at the video I just posted to Soul Fence Cabaret. There's so many nuances and little feelings and whatnot that Uncle Clifford and Tata Burlesque have, especially when you watch Trent play it. You can see it when you see Joe play it. And just so you guys understand, Soul Kids Cabaret has been through like, so many iterations. Shout out to my brother Malik Yoba, who has shown so much support through this process and, you know, um, mentioned, to, reminded me of our reading, like in 2003, 2004, um, that we had in New York City that he was a part of, where he was playing the character Isaiah Washington, play, not Isaiah Washington, but, you know, the, the character that Donald Gray played that is basically the same character Isaiah Washington played. But Malik Yoba played that, you know, read for that character for us for a second. And, um, just he was really excited about helping me get the story and was like oh this would be great it, in fact introduced me to some friends of his and we went to this this club and we were able to you know really do some character ex study and exploration i can't think of the, the transgender woman's name we met while we were all there having dinner but everybody i think trenice was with us tandy and we had this whole conversation and sort of babe please relax with the car okay i'm live I, but i am kind of Okay, y'all see, that's how we have debates. Anyway, if y'all married, you know, I ain't got no excuses to make. But anyway, my mom would be like, oh, Lord, she used to hold on. But to see the, the, the support that I'm getting from people who have been a part of Soul Kittens Cabaret and to look back and, and go through all that footage and the years of literally blood, sweat, and tears and, and, and watching the Tata Burlesque character come to life, you guys are going to have a chance, hopefully, to see all of that because we got all the footage. Like, we shot everything, filmed everything. When I tell y'all R&B Divas was born from Soul Kittens Cabaret, that's what it was. Angie Stone was in it. Um, Selena was in it. Monifa was in it. Kiki was in it. You know, it's just a, a beautiful group of women who, who lended their gifts and their talents to this amazing story and this amazing idea. And the one thing that we were so, I was just so proud proud not just of creating the story of soul kids cabaret because yeah just like players club and 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 chicago and all those other stories of women who dance and perform in clubs you know you you see the stories of the women and, and most of our stories you know have similarities but the unique different compelling never before seen like trini says in that clip from that previous from the previous post that very unique character that very unique um, relationship between the character Tata Burlesque or Uncle Clifford and the ladies who dance in the cabaret. The the, the love story between the bartender and the, the new girl and like all these nuances, everything, even some of the same words and delivery. And the biggest thing is that, you know, come on, like, okay, it's getting taken over for to build a casino in Vegas. It could have been taken over to build a whole bunch of things. But, you know, maybe if you took that part out and didn't put that up Pea Valley, I would be a believer. But, you know, huh, doubt it being sarcastic um but you know this isn't a p-valley rant this is just to let you guys know we're bringing the story back um they talk about saving the pink from the casino we got to save the cabaret from sars p-valley and mine and whoever else is involved in this because this story cannot i mean y'all for real like let me just let me just lay into it a little bit and just tap into your kind of common sense space and I mean no disrespect to the judicial system I mean I'm excited to go to LA and have this thing heard it makes me a little nervous because you know it, it, the whole idea but that but I can breathe now that we beat the dismissal motion they not dismissed in this case they transferring it to another state and I understand why because there's a lot of folks that need to tell us what had happened but if I went to LA today right put your, let's put our caps on right quick if I went to LA right now today Somebody posted under, this is why I'm saying this. Somebody posted under my comment about Soul Kittens Cabaret. Now watch people think that you stole the idea for P Valley when they see Soul Kittens Cabaret live. And me and my husband had that conversation, right? 
And that is the exact reason why it's so important for this thing to be flushed out in a court of law. Or, you know, run me my loop, either way. Um, but the reason why this is so important for this to be flushed out is because I can't go to anybody in California that owns a network today and be like, okay, so listen, let me try to pitch y'all. Y'all tell me what y'all think. Let me tell y'all, tell me if this sounds familiar. So I got this story, it's called Soul Kittens Cabaret. Now the heart and soul of this story is the fact that this was a club that was in the community for years and years and years. The women kind of stripped down a little bit and they bare a little bit of skin um, to make a living, but they're really very talented and really aspire to open up, you know, women's centers and positive things. Um, there's a person who is a dear mother and a matriarch called Tata Burlesque. He is a flamboyant described in the doggone pilot as a flamboyant drag queen, which is the word I used in 2004 because that's how we used to talk as opposed to non-binary and whatever. We've learned better, but it's described as a flamboyant drag queen, but here's the plot. There's these casino developers that are coming and they want the land. That I would, They would be rushing me out of there before I got to the next sentence because at the end of the day, it's been done. It's been done. It is the story has been told. I don't care what the second season was, which would have been better if I wrote it, but that's just me, you know, understanding my skills as a writer. After all, I did come up with the original concept. But the idea that I could go in and pitch Soul Kittens Cabaret as a lovable venue in Detroit that gets taken, I can't pitch the story anywhere. I can't share that story anywhere with anybody. And I can't do it because P Valley has told my story on a much bigger scale then I was able to tell it because they have a lot more money, a lot more resources, a lot more time, and a lot more skill, I guess, on a lot of levels um, to get the story told the way that they did. It doesn't take anything away from the fact that it came from me, that concept, that story, that whole idea. So I'm going to fight like hell for it. We're going to put the show back up better than ever. Now watch people, you know, it's definitely going to be some folks that are going to say that I'm basically trying to put P Valley on stage. Well, hey, listen, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it because I'm telling the story that I copyrighted in 2004. They telling the story they copyrighted in 2017 after there were several iterations, including it airing on BET as a play, including it being on DVD at Walmart and including it airing all over every streaming platform in the world since 2011. So I'm going to tell my story and hopefully you guys will come out and see it. Hopefully we'll be able to capture the process of the struggle to get this thing back on its feet. And I really, um, I don't want to say that. It's not going to be a struggle. The journey to get this thing back on its feet. Um, I really wanted to let this thing go, you guys. Like, look at me, for real. I really wanted this thing to be done, done, done. Finished, right? But I would be a fool and three quarters if I allowed a property where someone has publicly stated they gave Katori Hall a hundred million dollars for P Valley and nobody's ever done that for a first time showrunner before. See, we got those videos. We see all those conversations where she was in a, a, a pitch competition or what did she say? Her and the head of stars were pitching each other ideas in her initial pitch meeting. I am on it like white on rice. I know it inside out, word, front, word, backward, and I'm so glad that the judge saw that there were people that need to come and explain themselves and, and, and how the conversation went when they sat in that room and who came with her. Those people need to tell their version of, of what happened. And I don't have to justify what happened with Soul Kittens Cabaret because that was done and that was copywritten. And I appreciate the judge for saying just that. I appreciate the judge for saying, I don't need your witnesses to tell me about Soul Kittens Cabaret. Basically, I need to understand. We The, the, the court needs to understand these other players so um what does somebody say yeah i mean it's the the show is so kids cabaret is gonna have a you know it's gonna we gonna it's gonna be a little polished a lot more polished i, I did it what shit i wrote it in 2004 i don't want to tell you how old i was but that was before r&b divas um so it's gonna be better it's gonna be better it's gonna be greater um it's gonna be amazing and we're probably not going to go up until early fall because it's going to take a minute to really work through everything. And, you know, we do costumes and wardrobe and dance numbers and singing and performing. And um, um, I'm not changing my name. It's going to be Soul Kittens Cabaret, the original. And Tata Burlesque is, I'm not, I'm not going to change no names. 
we're not going to do that. We're telling our original story. I'm not adjusting anything from the story. Obviously, we will tweak up and tighten up and trim some fat. I'm going to go away and have a little writer's moment to really make the script amazing. In fact, what I'll probably do is a live table read, um, which would be fun, um, and invite some people. I want to see some new talent. I want to see... Um, so Kids Cabaret is all about triple threats, baby. When you look at that 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 previous reel, you got to be able to sing, you got to be able to dance, you got to be able to act. We've had some powerful women involved in Soul Kittens Cabaret, most of whom did it because they were my friends and they loved me. And it was my first time directing. So don't go looking at Soul Kittens Cabaret DVD like, oh, you know, this don't compare to Soul. Well, yeah, they gave Patori Hall $100 million for P Valley. If I had $100 million to produce a show, oh, Lord God, gee, oh, back. <laughs> I'm just going to leave y'all alone. If I had $100 million, to put into Soul Kittens Cabaret, first of all, oh, I can't even tell you what it would be, what it would look like. I can't even tell you what, I can't even tell you how amazing it would be, period. But what we're doing is we're moving forward in a positive direction. You know, we are being more proactive than reactive. I got to raise the money to fight these people in LA. Um, I got some people who have reached out to me who want to help in whatever way they can by the grace of God. Um, we're going to fight, fight, fight. But while we're fighting, we're going to be developing and continuing to develop the story of Soul Kittens Cabaret because it's a beautiful story. And while, you know, there is Uncle Clifford, because no, in Soul Kittens Cabaret, um, uh, the, um, Tata Burlesque wasn't banging another employee like, you know, certain certain you know the, the the in my opinion and this is my creative opinion the overly sexual part of p valley katori can have all that all that tna she can have all that soul kiss cabaret was definitely sexy it was definitely about strippers burlesque dancers that's what they are um it, it, it but we did it in a in a way that i think appeals to a more global audience because i just don't believe that you know you have to make everything about tna to make a story compelling i think sometimes you have tna and ball swinging and all that when you want to just get people's attention and have them focusing and paying attention to something and there's no storyteller there you understand what i'm saying um i'm a storyteller i'm a creator i'm a real storyteller and most of y'all know me as a singer and an advocate and somebody who always walk around with my fist in the air but i will tell you that i am one of the dopest storytellers out there i'm not ain't no shame in my game i'm a you can say i stick fly like a butterfly, sting like a bee. I could say I'm one of the most creative, innovative, dopest storytellers out there. I just don't get a chance to really do it because everybody wants to steal my stories. I'm not saying nobody stole my story until I can get to court and prove it. I'm just saying I have had on numerous occasions, not just with Soul Kittens Cabaret. There are other things that I can't even really focus on because, you know, I mean, the songs. Songs are stories. Most people who are songwriters can write a story. And I wrote like you know 80 90 percent of the brownstone stuff so i'm a writer and that's not about ego that's just about being confident enough to say that i deserve the credit for creating amazing characters like tata burlesque who is now some version or iteration of uncle clifford or however you say that it's just they're the same character um with the same plot same venue and I'm going to get my bread or my credit. You're not going to take both, period. You're not going to not give me credit for what I created and what I did and not pay me for it. So what I'm hopeful it for is that we just handle this business um, because that's all it's about for me at this point. It is not, um, it is not even about the emotion of the characters for me anymore because I've, you know, like I said, I cannot go tell that story to nobody else. Ain't nobody listening to me tell no story about Tata Burlesque and the ladies. Um, yes, um, Tata Burlesque and the ladies um, in this casino and all this other stuff. Reach out to Nas. He owns Ma Mass Specialty and just did Supreme Doc. And it's maybe, maybe you and your husband have seen it. Yeah, so the other part of this that's going to be so dope. Um, the other part of this. And y'all, please stop. Please stop 
okay, like, okay, so I see a lot of people are telling me to reach out to Irv and Nas and whatever and Tyler and but do, do y'all see the issue in that though? And I and I love and appreciate that people are like, no, you should reach out to these people because they can help you along the way. Why do black women always have to reach out to a man, or the black man, a white man, a culturally incompetent white male lens, whatever it is? Why do we always have to go somewhere else and ask for somebody to do something for us? I created a show, a story that has generated hundreds of millions of dollars allegedly by a company um i should not have to go running and asking somebody for a handout or opportunity i should be in the conversation the same conversation that people are in when they're saying go to tyler or go to byron allen or go to whoever i've created several hit shows for networks i've generated lots and lots of money for networks i should be able to produce whatever the hell i want to produce which is why it was so important for me to make sure i had ownership of r&b divas it took me 11 years to get there but why did it take me 11 years to get to ownership of my franchise because i am a black woman period that's it i know y'all hate to hear that i know that you um don't believe that that is an actual thing that black women actually have to work 10 times as hard you know, for half as little, you know what I'm saying? It's just crazy to me that people don't get why it's important for us to make sure that black there are spaces for black women and representation of black women by black women, for us, by us. And we can tell our stories the way we want to tell them. And we don't have to, you know, keep going to men, especially, you know, ones that don't look like us, to tell our stories and to have real viable ownership of our brands. It's not taking them, babe. You better put them in one at a time. Um, I'm sorry, y'all. Anyway, uh, so I know it's turned kind of into a little bit of a P-Valley rant. Um, it's actually just, mo hopefully it's motivation for you guys to um, support Soul Kittens Cabaret because I'm very hopeful and prayerful that we have the opportunity to sell out venues. We're going to do the show in Atlanta. Um, auditions will start getting posted. It's going to be a long process, guys. We got to still get our funding. We got to get our partnerships. We got to get our venue. Rehearsals for Soul Kittens Cabaret ain't on no Who Shot John. This is going to be something that's going to require months of rehearsal. So doing that in combination with doing Brownstone um, and going through this litigation and going to LA is going to be obviously what I have to share on this new season of R&B Divas, which will be going down. And going up all the way up um we'll just leave don't, don't put that no. in if it doesn't make okay i'm sorry guys you know anyway whatever um let me look at these comments yes absolutely you deserve what's rightfully yours you can but why do we reach out when they're naturally creative i'm just saying i mean yeah i just feel like you know i there are some women Shout out to um, Michelle Sneed, who has her company, A Few Good Women. I'm reaching out to her. I'm reaching out to any women producers because I just feel like we need to support each other. And when we have viable properties, um, you know, it doesn't have to be all women led, but there has to be a woman in a leadership position um, for anything I do moving forward. Just because if we don't look out for each other and if we don't... Um, provide opportunities for each other who's going through a course. But all right, y'all, I'm here. I've always been very pro-woman and very pro-opportunities for women. So, hello, hello, hello. Babe, let's just go, really. Babe, you're mad at me. I'm not mad at you. I'm mad, but there's, it's spitting the doors out. So what is it you want me to do? Okay. Y'all hear us going back and forth. We've been arguing quite a bit today, right? I'm probably have to delete this live. <laughs> I'm just sitting here like it's not taking it. Let's, let's right. go. Let's spit it let's back out. It. To, to okay, well let's. It's not taking it. Let's on. go. I gotta go to the bathroom. Okay. Bring me. Ain't nothing like a good man, <laughs> right? Black people need each other. Uh, man or woman, way too dope. Yes, I appreciate. No, I agree. Black people do need each other, but you know, I'm. I'm all about ownership at this point. You know what I'm saying? And why should we be in situations where we have to keep constantly going to other people? Why can't black women go to black women? 
right? You mentioned the lie of brothers, which is great. And I think it's dope that they're doing stuff, but that's what happens. We are constantly going to men to do the job for us and we can do it ourselves. We got the followers, we got the relationships with one another. Well, we can build the relationships with one another because quite as it's kept, what I'm trying to tell you about that is what I'm seeing on this Queens of r and I just, I'm praying that this, this fixes itself. Jesus fixed it. But hopefully we'll be able to get together as black women and really um, build something awesome and not have to run to the usual suspects who have the ability to get us on TV or get our shows picked up or whatever. I would like for those brothers to help us build our own, right? If, if somebody's like, hey, sis, I see you building your worth TV platform and your app, you know what I'm saying? Let me point you in the direction of some resources or whatever, whatever that's fine. But I don't feel like, you know, going to somebody and be like, hey, could you put me in? What's that? Please listen to my demo, babe. I don't feel like, you know, we need to be doing that. I'm not doing it. Not at this level. No, I created his shows. I should be in a position to compete with all of those brothers. Sorry. And maybe that's the reason why I don't be on TV like that. Because I'm not just taking no reality TV check for you to live off my life and live off the fat of the land and for me not to have no ownership. My husband ain't going to let me do it, right? We done been asked, so who did you do, housewives? Hell no. But plus, we don't live no housewives life. So that wouldn't be even realistic. But we'll do R&B Divas now that we own it. I watch you in Tyler Perry's play yesterday. The vocals, thank you so much. Because black women hate on each other. You know what? You ain't lying about that. Um, what is that? Real talk. You ain't lying. Black women do hate on each other quite a bit. Um, but there's a lot of us who don't. A lot of us really want to see each other win. And, and those are, that's the tribe I'm trying to find. You know, we need to find each other. That's it. You said what, babe? Pete, my husband got the same, same concept. He's got the same concept. He feels like people are alpha self. And they are, but just because other people are alpha self does not mean that you have to be. Shit. Honey, I'm alive. Y'all, hey, we've been married. Do you realize how long we have been together? I just, Braylon asked me the other day. He was like, oh my God. Me and my husband have been together for over 20 years. Going on 24 or something like that, which is. Tired of you. <laughs> Just way tired of me too. Baby, don't get it twisted. But we are so nice. Yes, I want to find women. Yes, guys, that's no shade. And I'm about to get off here because I've been rambling. But that's no shade. I just think it's time for us to, to start being able to say, hey, well, you know, you got a new show idea. Why don't you run over to Michelle Sneed? Or why don't you run over to Nikki Hilbert Daniels? Or why don't you run over to the Princess? Or why, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's time for women to be able to help put each other on, especially since we're the number one consumers of the content that everybody's making all the money from. And that's the biggest thing for me. Like, right, you know, if you create something, an intellectual property as big as Feet Valley has gotten, and you believe there's the slightest possibility, not only because the story is exactly the same, but because you went to Lionsgate and left them your script and all of your stuff. And then you looked up years later and they have the same exact story. Like, where is the where are the people at the company who read the script that Katori came up with and copy wrote, copy wrote in 2017 and say, wait, these are the same stories. Like, don't they have like, people who do that? My husband is like, we go find out who they are. I don't care about finding out who they are. What I care about is my shit at this point. That's it. I'm not even going to hold you up. It's not even about calling nobody out. It's not even about, you know, exposing. I need, a, I need the respect and the courtesy of someone saying this thing made a tremendous success, was tremendously successful for our company. And yeah. We, we kind of see that, yeah, <laughs> there's some substantial similarities here. We gave her $100 million and before it became hugely successful. And now that it's hugely successful, we probably gave her an equal amount of hundreds of millions of dollars. And everybody's famous and successful from it. So let's cut this lady a Kona so we can go on ahead and do whatever the heck we want to do with our show. And she can go and continue to do the work of creating employment opportunities. Because whether you choose to accept it or not. It's a lot of people working as a result of P-Valley. And P-Valley is, you know, very, very similar to Soul Kings Cabaret. In addition to that, Soul Kings Cabaret gave birth to R&B Divas, which had a lot of people working. 
So I do the work of making sure that we are creating opportunities for our community to thrive and create generational wealth and wellness opportunities for one another. I'm actually a black woman who's out here doing the work. Don't get in my way. Don't, don't try to prevent me from, from, from getting... Don't stop me. Don't stop me. Don't say that what they be saying, babe. Don't stop me. <laughs> don't try to prevent me from doing the good work of creating great content that will help not just entertain our people, but empower them, you know, and tell stories that are not so monolithic and degrading and, and don't mean that we have to get on TV and fight about it, right? That's one thing I can tell you for sure that it will not be happening on R&B Divas. This cat fights and conspiracy and all of this madness, this is not what R&B Divas is gonna be about. We've already been down that road. We're not doing that no more. We're telling the truth. We're being transparent. We're being honest. We're hopefully healing our relationships. We are building businesses like we did in season one. We are creating great opportunities for generational wealth and ownership. And anybody who wants to be a part of that, trust me, your girl ain't, we not me and Faith not going to let y'all down. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what they're doing over there. But we don't do that kind of TV. Especially since we now have the ability to say no. Now there's going to be drama. Y'all ain't going to watch it if it's not any drama. But I feel like the first season of R&B Diva showed drama, sisterhood, love, <laughs> uh, shade, um, opportunity. It was bomb. We did the Essence Festival. Like, it was so super bomb. This season, I want to go back to the beginning. I want to go back to what R&B Diva was created based on, which is Soul Kids Cabaret. Hello. Which happens to be in the middle of a litigation. But more important than that. I want us to create and build something that creates longevity for us. You know, we're talking about R&B Divas tour. We, we can go on tour. We're going to go on tour. In fact, we've already started having conversations with people about the possibilities of tours. Um, so R&B Divas is going to fly. Soul Kids Cabaret is going to fly. And I'll tell you what's not going to fly. This Pea Valley situation. It's not going to fly. I don't care how long it takes, maybe. So I need y'all to support me. I need you guys to go to... Uh, Y'all know where it is, worthmedia.com. We are building this thing. It's going to be amazing. I'm so excited about having the opportunity to hear from some of the people who have something to say about what happened. At first, I was a little like, oh, LA, LA. But I want that subpoena power. I want to be able to make sure people show up in court and tell me what really happened. Or I want my check. You said how it happened? <laughs> That's all it's missing. Well, how it happened. He y'all think look, y'all think I am the thing that you know this one over here, he over it. He over this industry, he over these people, he is over all of it. So y'all pray for my hero and my knight in shining armor. Pray for the man, because he's not here about this life. You understand what I'm saying? And we've been doing this, we've been going through this for a long time, and not just through our um Valley, but R&B Divas was, was a journey too. R&B Divas was a journey. But look at where we are now, baby. We own it. We own it. We own it. Alright, you guys, tonight, I'm going to go live and talk a whole lot more again. Yes, it's going to be R&B Divas Season 4. I think. Maybe. Who knows? I got to talk to Faith and see what she want to do. And our team. Okay, but it's coming soon and you guys are going to see a lot of this journey. Thank you, Chike. I am a soldier, and I'm married to a soldier, literally. I'm married to a literal soldier, veteran, a man who has had my back through thick and thin. And I see y'all out here looking at him because he's fine. And he's, you know, very, very alpha male and all that other stuff. Don't let me have to, you know. I'm just like, all right, let me get out here. I'm talking too much. Love you guys. Honey, you want to say anything before we close? No. <laughs> you need to a few words. Okay, love and appreciate y'all. Please go to worthmedia.com and stay tuned for Soul Kittens Cabaret auditions. Oh my God, this is going to be a process. But same way y'all watch me birth Curvado, you will watch Soul Kittens Cabaret grow. And every struggle that we go through to make this thing happen will be televised. The revolution will be televised. Run me my loop. <laughs>